Hello everyone. Welcome to our channel. Today, we're going to have fun and delve into the third physics puzzle from the physics puzzle series in our channel. So, let's begin. Today's problem is about electrical circuits. So, it's gonna be exciting. Our job is to find the current I in the given circuit. Before we actually solve this problem, it's a good idea to discuss the structure of the circuit a little bit. First of all, this circuit includes three resistors, two independent current sources, and one independent voltage source. In addition, we spot a dependent voltage source which is dependent on the current I. Altogether it's a so-called resistive circuit, that is, it only has resistors and sources whether dependent or independent, and there is no capacitor or inductor. Therefore, from the mathematical point of view, no differential equation is involved and we only need to deal with algebraic equations. To analyze any electrical circuit we employ Kirchhoff's laws. Kirchhoff's current law or KCL states that the amount of incoming current to a node is equal to the amount of outgoing current from that node. KCL is basically the statement of the conservation law of current. On the other hand, Kirchhoff's voltage law or KVL states that the algebraic voltage sum in a loop or mesh is zero. KVL is basically the statement of the conservation law of voltage. Generally speaking, KCL and KVL are aspects or restatements of the conservation law of energy in physics. In most textbooks, normally, there are two formal methods to analyze electrical circuits, the nodal analysis, and the mesh analysis. You might have heard them with different names. These methods are kinda long and time-consuming and not very efficient for students on a hard exam or on a physics olympiad. Instead, today, I'm going to teach you a method that helps you to solve hard problems very efficiently. There are actually two similar methods for that, the first one is, keep doing KCL until you find a nice KVL, and, the second one is, keep doing KVL until you find a nice KCL. Also, we keep in mind that we can always benefit from other tricks like symmetry to simplify a circuit. Today, I'm gonna teach you the first method and you'll see how we can solve the circuit problems specifically the resistive circuits within seconds. I'll be talking about the second method and symmetries in future episodes. Let's see how this method works. The procedure is simple. First, we write KCL for some good nodes. We try to keep our KCLs only dependent on one unknown variable as long as possible. Then, we try to continue to play with the KCLs until the nodes around a loop has been considered. So, then, we apply KVL, and, since we kept only one unknown variable, the equation we get out of KVL is a simple one variable algebraic equation. Don't worry if you find it perhaps confusing, we're gonna walk through it in our problem. Consider the bottom left node. The current I is incoming to the node, also there is another 1 ampere is incoming to the node by the 1 ampere current source. So, by KCL, the outgoing current from the node should be I plus 1 ampere. Next, consider the top left node. There is I plus 1 ampere incoming to the node as well as a 6 ampere current from the current source. So, there should be I plus 7 ampere outgoing from the node. We repeat the same for the top right node. The I plus 7 ampere current is incoming to the node but 1 ampere is leaving the node. So, I plus 6 ampere is leaving the node to the right edge of the circuit. Now, the currents in the bottom, left, top, and right branches of the circuit are identified in terms of one unknown variable, I. There is no need to write KCL for the bottom right node since we already know the incoming and outgoing currents towards it. But, it's a good check to do that here. We see that I plus 6 ampere current in pumping the node and the 6 ampere current source is taking 6 ampere and so the remaining current I is running through the bottom edge. So far so good, huh? Now, we realize that we can form a loop with only one unknown variable. So, we can write the KVL for this loop to find I. We start from the left edge which contains the dependent voltage source, and we circle clockwise. Because we are entering the dependent voltage source from the negative end and we exit the source from the positive end, we feel the increase in the voltage difference. So, in writing KVL we start with plus 5I. Then, we get minus 1 multiplied by, I plus 7, by the Ohm's law. Note that we get a minus sign here because we are passing through the 1 ohm resistor in the direction of the current, I plus 7. Whenever we pass a resistor in the direction of the current we get a minus sign since the voltage is dropped down, and whenever we pass a resistor in the opposite direction of the current, we get a plus sign since the voltage has increased. Keep going to finish the loop. 
we have minus 5 multiplied by i plus 6, and, then minus 2 multiplied by i. Now, we are passing through a voltage source of 8 volts. Since we are entering the positive end and leaving the negative end, we feel a voltage drop. So, we get minus 8 in the KVL. Now, we ended the loop and we are at the same initial point, so there's no voltage difference between the initial and end points. So, the equation's gonna be equal to 0. We can now simplify it to get 3i plus 45 is equal to 0. Arbitrarily, we can set the sign assignment convention the other way around. We can set whenever we pass through a voltage from a positive end, we get a plus sign, and whenever we pass a voltage source from the negative end, we get a negative sign. Accordingly, for resistors, whenever we pass a resistor in the direction of the current we get a plus sign and vice versa. In this way, we start with minus 5 i since we are entering the voltage source from its negative end, and we get plus 1 multiplied by i plus 7, since we are passing through the 1 ohm resistor in the direction of the current. Then, we get plus 5 multiplied by i plus 6, and plus 2 multiplied by i. Then, we are passing the 8 volt source from the positive end, so we get plus 8. Last, we close the loop by setting it to 0. By any means, both give the same result. Choose whichever convention you feel more comfortable with. Finally, we determine I which is minus 15 amperes. That was fun, wasn't it? Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and subscribe. See you next time.